helped defeat totalitarianism during the Second World War, soldiered on through the Cold War, and is now one of the most popular military surplus firearms on the market today. This is five things you don't know about the M1 rifle. In service from 1936 through 1957, the M1 Garand was the first standard-issue semi-automatic rifle adopted by the U.S. military. This is a gas-operated system that functions by virtue of an operating rod that cycles the weapon's bolt after each pull of the trigger. Now, during World War II, the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan, all used manually operated bolt-action weapons as their standard-issue rifle. So the M1 Garand, with its self-loading action, gave U.S. troops a distinct volume of fire advantage because they were able to fire eight rounds without moving their hands from the firing position. Although the M1 Garand rifle was chambered for the M2 30 caliber cartridge during its service life, it was originally designed to fire a different cartridge, the smaller 276 Peterson. This is because during the years that followed the First World War, the U.S. Army began to assess the combat performance of all of its infantry weapons and the cartridges they fired. And in doing so, the Army recognized that small caliber bullets moving at high velocities produced greater amounts of trauma on impact and were therefore more destructive and more ideally suited for the modern battlefield. So, when John Cantius Garand, an engineer at Springfield Armory, first designed the M1, he designed the rifle as a 10-shot semi-auto chambered in 276 Peterson. However, the Army ultimately elected to abandon the 276 Peterson cartridge and instead continue to use the M230 caliber, which had already been in service since 1906. Garand modified his design to fit the M230 caliber, and when he did so, the larger size of the cartridge meant that the rifle could no longer accommodate 10 shots, which is why it was ultimately reduced to an eight-round capacity. The M1 Garand was the U.S. military's standard-issue infantry rifle during World War II. And while it demonstrated itself to be a robust, reliable, and effective weapon with no significant shortcomings, it did soon inspire a new design. In 1941, Winchester Repeating Arms introduced the M1 Carbine. The M1 Carbine is lighter, smaller, and it fires a different cartridge, but its short-stroke gas piston and rotating locking bolt were based on the Garand system. These two weapons served side by side throughout World War II, and the fact that the Garand's operating system could lend itself to another caliber so readily reveals just how exceptional that rifle's design was. To fulfill government contracts during the 40s and 50s, the M1 Garand was produced by four different manufacturers, the Springfield Armory, as well as three civilian companies, Winchester Repeating Arms, Harrington & Richardson, and International Harvester, the last of which was best known for producing tractors and other agricultural machinery. Between 1932 and 1957, these manufacturers produced a combined total of approximately 5.5 million M1 Garand rifles, with International Harvester producing just under 338,000. In the late 1950s, the M14 rifle began replacing the M1 Garand as the standard issue rifle for the U.S. military. The version that I'm holding here is the civilian model known as the M1A. The M14, or in this case the M1A, is effectively just a product improved M1 Garand rifle. The big differences are that it fires a different cartridge, the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO cartridge, and it feeds from a detachable 20 round box magazine. In addition to that, 
The military's M14 is also capable of firing in the fully automatic mode, something that the M1 was not. Despite these differences, though, you can clearly see the influence of the M1 Garand in this weapon. Today, the M1 rifle continues to hold an esteemed place of legend in military history. Its impact on the Second World War was so immense that one of the top military leaders of the era called it the greatest battle implement ever devised. Do you know who said that? If so, post your answer below or reach out to us through Twitter using hashtag 5ThingsYouDon'tKnow.